Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, feast your eyes on this classic 1975 Yamaha Enduro 250, complete with the original factory paint job in excellent condition. Shines like a diamond in the sun, the metallic paint, the original seat cover, the original side cover, even the original graphics exhaust. Largely original Survivor that's just been massaged to perfection here by the techs at Kaplan Cycles and the New England Motorcycle Museum. Typical of the era, most of these were turned into trail bikes only, and that's what they did with this one. It's got a really nice aluminum front number plate on it. The front fender is painted silver to match the rear fender. The original factory paint has got a beautiful shine on it, as you can see. And the original Enduro 250 logo is intact and in great shape. And look at that motor. This thing's an absolute jewel. Uh, it's just been professionally given a full rotisserie detail here. You can see the original chrome on the rims and the shocks. All the aluminum's been polished on it. The car's been professionally rebuilt. I'll read the whole work order. There's an extensive work order. The tank's been reconditioned. Uh, the fuel pickcock's been replaced. Underneath the original factory seat is nice. Uh, you can see everything's intact here, including the original how-to layout for the battery breather. Uh, it, the battery's been removed because it doesn't have lights on it anymore. It's set up for off-road only. But if you wanted to, you can buy the reproduction parts here for this bike. It even has the, to, to put the lights on. It's got the original kickstand, the original chain guide the chain and sprockets are in mint condition uh, it's got a set of knobby tires on it front and rear uh, the original chrome on the forks is in excellent condition usually those are rusted out the chrome on the cap is nice take a look at the photos blow them up snoop around you'll see it's in beautiful shape but one thing i always recommend checking is the bottom of the frame because if they've been heavily ridden off-road usually they're all dented this one is in excellent condition uh, the engine cases are really nice the cylinder fins the factory exhaust the shifter um, all the cycle parts are indica indica indicating the bike has not been ridden a whole lot and it has just been gone through a full rotisserie detail. I'll read the work order for you in a minute. I believe these are the, I'm 95% sure these are the original factory grips and the original handlebars. They're not in perfect shape, but another proof of the point that this bike has very low hours on it and it looks, runs just as good as it looks. Let me demonstrate that. Guys, if, if you have been following the history of motocross, these Yamahas, they, they pretty much created a new standard in 1968 when they came out with the DT1. This was the sixth year of the DT model, this one here being a 1975, so they had made a lot of improvements and upgrades. And this is the engine to have for either recreational or competition use. This is good for motocross, enduros, hair scrambles, and it's a lot of fun to ride on the street and off-road. So. If you're looking for a fun bike that's bulletproof, no other manufacturer has stood the test of time like the Yamahas, and that's why the 68 DT1s are in the 70, 69, 70. That's why these are so valuable as to the collectors, because the ones that are in the know, like me, know that these things are bulletproof. Uh, both of the 68s that we had in this year both sold for north of $10,000, not uncommon. Uh, this one here, the 75, is worth, worth a little bit less because it's not the first year but nonetheless, an investment quality classic. But it's all about fun for me, so uh, my inner child's about to get real happy.
guys, uh, I got an extensive work order on it. It's smoking a little bit because, well, they just replaced the crank seals and the crank seals were um, needing replaced. So there was oil in the exhaust and that's burning off, but rest assured it has brand new crank seals in there. So that'll clear up with a little bit of ride time. It's only got maybe a couple miles on it since we redid the crank seals. So let me go over the work order here. Uh, we started out by taking the gas tank off, flushing it out and cleaning the fuel tank inside and out. Uh, we replaced the fuel pickoff assembly with a brand new fuel pickoff assembly. If you zoom in, you'll see that's new. You'll see the fuel line and the fuel filter are new to keep any particles out of the carb. The new carb vent lines and a major carb service with a new float bowl gasket. Uh, you can see that the uh, line is new, new float bowl gaskets, and it's been cleaned inside and out. Uh, the um, main, jet ex main jet extension O-ring has been replaced. Uh, the magneto, so the carb was totally gone through, the jets were clean inside and out, the tank. Uh, the magneto was serviced, they clean, clean and adjusted the ignition points gap, set the ignition timing to spec, installed the new left side crank seal, right over on this side here, and resealed the ignition cover. And on the right side, we put a new right side hand crank seal and resealed the right side with it, with the, uh, resealed the right side engine cover. Uh, topped off the oil injection tank with Bell Ray two stroke injection oil, serviced, bled and adjusted the oil injection pump, uh, lubed and adjusted the oil injection pump cable, lubed and adjusted the throttle cable. The transmission oil was changed uh, with, in, with new Maxima transmission oil, lubed and adjusted the front brake cable, adjusted the brakes front and rear, put in a new Ed UK spark plug and a new universal foam air filter. Uh, went through all the electrical connections, got all those dialed in. So um, quite a bit of time was put into the bike in the service department. It's got a new spark plug, new fuel lines, new fuel filter, new fuel petcock, new transmission oil. Uh, it's running VP ethanol free fuel, mixed 70 to one. Uh, that's another reason it's smoking a little bit is anytime we have an oil injected bike like this, when we re rebuild the crank and engine seals, what we do is we run a premix of 70 to one to complement the 30 to one or 20 to one factory auto lube injection to just to make sure everything's lubricated properly in the motor uh, on a classic like this, that's important. That's another reason it's smoking a little bit. That'll clean up with a fret once you have the fresh, non-premixed oil in there. So, um, all elect electrical, electrical connectors were gone through. Some of them were replaced. Um, the two-stroke oil is Bell Ray. Uh, full carb gasket kit, carb bowl gasket, main jet extension O-ring, and we actually replaced the main jet exten extension uh, with another uh, one. And the choke assembly was replaced. And Put a new float bowl assembly on it so some replacement parts on the uh obviously the ones i mentioned and those are original yamaha parts on, on the carburetor no aftermarket stuff because sometimes that that can cause an issue and then i went to the detail shop the detail shop gave it a steam clean hand wash let me pull out the work order here so i don't speak out of school um what we call a full rotisserie detail actually doc finished this one right right yes sir the uh, bike was steam cleaned, hand washed, buffed, waxed, and detailed all the metal surfaces. You can zoom in, you can see the original factory paint has a heavy metal flake in it, which is really qu quite a good look for the time. Um, that stood the test of time, it's 47 years old. The factory graphics are in excellent shape, and I already mentioned earlier, the, the Enduro 250 logo is intact. So the entire bike got a rotisserie detail. That means from the top of the handlebars to the bottom of the engine, everything's been cleaned. All the chrome's been polished with quadruple zero steel wool and, and chrome polish. All the aluminum has been polished. All the bolt heads have been polished. The chrome gas caps have been polished. The levers have been polished. This is a brand new number plate with new mounting. This is a, no, this is a, a aluminum period correct aluminum front number plate. The front fender was repainted. The fork um, uh, tubes, you can see there's no rust on them. They're polished beautifully. The fork lowers were also the original factory clear coat had failed, so they were stripped and polished, which is no easy task. There's, there's hours of work into just that. The chrome um, on the on the wheels has been polished. The spokes have been polished. The uh, exhaust was, was removed and completely stripped and repainted. The cylinder head was repainted. The cylinder jug was repainted. The engine cases were polished. The um, this is not the correct peg, but it's one we had in stock. It's not the correct rubber cover, but we didn't have another one in stock. Um, you can buy those on eBay for, eBay for like 20 or 30 bucks. Uh, the kicker is polished. The, the rear brake assembly was serviced. You can see the lower frame rails here were repainted. And uh, the bottom of the engine was steam clean. The swing arm was repainted. The, this uh, brake stay was repainted. The side covers were polished. The original factory seat cover was cleaned uh, and treated. Underneath the seat was painted clean. The frame rails back here were painted. 
the shocks lowers were painted um, all the chrome was polished the inner brake hub here was polished as you can see and the spokes were cleaned we left the original turn signal mounts on there I, I, I only left them on there for one reason because someone may want to turn this back into a street bike and it, it's hard to find those so if you're gonna run it off-road only just take this one bolt off and then put this in your toolbox we sometimes lose bikes with parts when we ship them separately so we kept that on there but if it were mine I would take it off and and, and use it as a trail bike um, really awesome fun classic bike that's gonna give you years of good use with no, no issues again doing the crank seals not something most mechanics want to do uh, average mechanics want to do at home proper rebuilding of the carb servicing the tank the auto lube injection professional repaint of the um, the engine there's over 30 hours labor into the bike plus parts uh, about a $3,500 investment in parts and labor to get this thing to where it is now which is ready to roll to the line at an AHRMA vintage event for enduro or hair scrambles or trials or just ride it um, on the trails uh, use it as a camp bike or to get around the pits or roll it back into the museum because it looks perfectly on display with our classic Yamaha display in the New England Motorcycle Museum. If you have any questions about this classic, give us a call at 860-454-7024. It's going back in the museum now where it'll be on display until you pick it up. If you have any questions, call us. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. We're also selling raffle tickets for a brand new 2022 CRF 450 Honda to support the museum. Just go to KaplanCycles.com for 10 bucks. Throw your hat in the ring. You might win you might be the lucky one to win a new $14,000, $13,800 is what we paid for that bike. And uh, we're trying to s sell raffle tickets to support the museum. So thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe and click that little bell button. And anytime we do a video, you'll get notified. Thanks for watching. And oh, Father's Day is coming up. If I haven't mentioned it already, what a great gift for dad. If you're a dad, great excuse to buy one. But uh, just a kick-ass classic. This is a, a generational bike that will outlast you and the next generation will be riding it. Guys, this is the brand new Honda 450 you can win with a $10 ticket, brand spanking new, 10 bucks. So if you're looking to get a new bike and you can't afford one, 10 bucks you might win. Thanks for watching and God bless America.